Vision. Hey everyone, Dave here, and right now I'm geeking out over dorm life. Dave's obsession. Dave's obsession of the homo. Dorm Life was a 2008 web series that ran for two seasons, a mockumentary about a freshman college dorm. The series was created by a sketch group from UCLA who teamed up with Attention Span Media to produce the first season covering the first semester on this dorm floor, and it quickly became the most popular web series on Hulu. The two seasons totaled 46 episodes, not counting all the bonus videos of the characters goofing off with their webcams, creating their own little mini-shows and vlogs. The show is heavily inspired by the American version of The Office, as seen in both the mockumentary format and in some of the character archetypes, but it doesn't take long for it to form its own identity. And unlike The Office, it didn't wait seven years before exploring the impact that being in a documentary had on these characters. Oh yeah, Dorm Life had a boom guy with an unhealthy interest in the love story before it was cool. While the show is mostly ensemble-driven, the closest thing to a central protagonist is Mike Sanders, played by series co-director Chris Smith. Hey everyone, I'm Mike. Um, so they gave us all these webcams to kind of keep you up to date with what's going on. And if this is the office of college life, then he's the Jim Halpert analog in the sense that he's a relative straight man with a will-they-or-won't-they dynamic and a propensity towards pranks. Through only a little bit of fault of his own, Mike finds himself in a rivalry with the floor RA Marshall Adams I, played by Brian Singleton. Prepare to die! Prepare to die! Blood makes the grass grow! Kill, kill, kill! Prepare to die! I don't think Marshall knows how to rhyme. Marshall is arrogant. Uh, I've never had a lame-ass high school girlfriend. Really? I've never been single in college. I've never cried. Marshall is bossy. There are no dumb questions allowed. Marshall is overly competitive. Yeah! Yeah! Marshall is abusive. The party's over! Marshall is not nearly as smart or funny as he thinks he is. Hi, uh, Yasi, Miss RA of Five North. Um, Bye. Marshall is in deep denial about his own insecurities. Okay then, fine. So I guess it's my fault. I guess it's me, this guy. Marshall's too insecure. Marshall's too aggressive. Marshall's too sarcastic. Marshall is like if Michael Scott and Dwight Schrute were merged into one character with maybe a dash of Job Blue thrown in. At Marshall's side is the other non-freshman on the floor coordinating all the social activities, Steph Schwartzman, played by Jesse Gaskell. Hey y'all, Steph here, and I took the liberty of organizing a little floor event tonight where we can all meet, mingle, and make memories! <laughs> Steph is the perky ball of energy whose social passions outweigh her social graces. Just tidying up! Grab a broom! Broom service! Can I flip your pillow? Steph, you make me want to be a worse person. Unlike Marshall, Steph bends over backwards to make sure everybody gets along, sometimes at the expense of her own personhood. No, you should go. We can play later. We can always play later! Okay, thanks, Steph. Her desperation for floor fun -tivities is only outdone by her desperation to be included. I might assume she was partly inspired by Leslie Nope, except this show was created before Parks and Rec aired, and I've been comparing too many characters to other mockumentary characters already. The other residents seem to fit into a wide variety of college freshman archetypes, embodying the first impressions you might get of your floor mates your first week of college. There's the party animals, Gopher Reed, played by Jim Brandon, and Shane Ridley, played by Jack DeSena. Gopher and Shane hit it off right away, drinking together before they even meet each other. Do you drink? Probably! Yes! Oh! I'm Gopher! I'm Shane, man! What's up? And through most of season one, they seem to be an inseparable and almost indistinguishable unit, even going as each other for Halloween. In fact, at first glance, the only difference between them is their wardrobe. Gopher mostly wears shirts with pictures of himself on them, and Shane just alternates between two secondhand shirts. So Shane, buddy, looks like you decided to wear one of my shirts to your final. Yeah, only because I think I lost my friend Sam. By the way, if you're wondering why Shane's voice sounds so familiar... I'm the oldest, and I'm a warrior, so I'm the leader. That's right, my friends. Thanks to M. Night Shyamalan, these two guys played the same character. I'm kidding, of course. This guy's version wasn't really a character.
In contrast to Shane and Gopher's party antics is their third roommate, Daniel Benjamin, played by Jordan Riggs. What time do you expect to go to bed? Uh, ten. <laughs> My four? four? Yes! yes! <laughs> I love college already! <laughs> Danny B is an uptight, dedicated, studious, overwhelmingly sheltered mama's boy. Would you rather eat cake or eat ice cream cake? Danny B embodies the college freshman who's overprepared academically, but in way over his head socially. But some people are trying to get into pharmacy school. Obviously, that means nothing to you. Meanwhile, Mike's roommate is the pretentious and unpredictable art student, Josh Morgan, played by Pancho Morris. <laughs> is that my deodorant? <laughs> that is not mine. <laughs> Josh is constantly working on art, theater, and film projects, often with disregard for how they affect the people around him. Abigail, do you mind if I study in here? Okay, thank you. And yet, his results usually impress his floor mates, so generally they aren't all that bothered by all the weirdness they have to deal with along the way. At least not at first. There's so many layers. It's my roommate. <laughs> then there's the high school best friends, Brittany Wilcox, played by Hannah Perlutt, and Courtney Cloverlock, played by Nora Kirkpatrick, whose face you might recognize from that show Greek, and whose accordion playing you might recognize from that band Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. <laughs> At the start, Brittany and Courtney both appear to be kind of stereotypical sorority girls. We dress up like pandas because we love salads, we get the most attention at the zoo, and we're innocent. And we're forced to mate in captivity. Yes. <laughs> Although there are hints early on that Brittany's smarter than Courtney. How are we gonna find him though? You know, it's like, it's like Cinderella. I met him at the ball, then he just disappears. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Uh, we could look up his profile. I bet his away message will say where he is. Yes. This is what we'll do. Can we do this in a library? No. Um, on the computer. How? And Brittany's the one who's in the will they or won't they dynamic with Mike. Finally, Steph's roommate is the extremely shy Abigail Brown, played by Anne Lane. Abby comes from some sort of uber-conservative, faux-Amish religious community, and she is less than thrilled with Steph's loud, brazen social drive. Do you feel comfortable having guests? <laughs> Accidentally, open door policy in this room. <laughs> oh yeah, you thought Danny B was sheltered? Wait till you meet Abby. The floor is fleshed out with a couple of minor characters, as well as occasional guest appearances from folks like The Guild's Jeff Lewis and veteran TV writer Sherry Steinkellner. The series is scripted, but heavily enhanced with improvisation, and for the first couple of episodes it looks like it's going to be just a showcase of random slice-of-life events from the freshman year of this ensemble. It shows typical college experiences like partying, drinking, hookups, and even the occasional studying. And it would have been easy to run an entire series of just these varied characters engaging in these activities without much consequence. But the show also remembers the one universal college experience, probably the most important thing a person can experience in college. Change. Before you get too deep into season one, you might find yourself noticing that while some moments may feel like standalone sketches with the characters, every episode includes at least one beat that moves the story forward and showcases a step in the character's growth. And as a result, not every facet of our first impressions of these characters holds true to the end of the series. Seemingly unassailable good guys have their dark moments, and seemingly irredeemable bad guys have their empathetic moments. But that's not to say the characterization is inconsistent. Every character remains recognizable at their core as being the same person throughout the series, but they all grow and evolve in motivated, organic ways. Characters make mistakes. <laughs> The mistakes have consequences. Hi, United States. Would you mind telling Brittany that next time she wants to flirt with a guy in front of her best friend, that it shouldn't be hot chat? The love of my life. They learn from those consequences. We were friends for so long. We were like sisters. Um, and it just, it didn't make sense to throw that away over some stupid guy thing. They don't repeat those mistakes. I kind of had a thing for Mike. Kind of. I'm not going to ruin our friendship over some stupid guy. 
Some characters grow apart, others grow closer together, and others do both at different points. We're stronger for it. Characters who start out embodying college stereotypes are treated as three-dimensional people with hidden depths and a capacity for raw, emotionally honest moments. And while the storytelling of the main series does hide a brilliantly tight structure underneath these seemingly loose shenanigans, the character exploration isn't limited to the main series. As I mentioned, the main characters have their own vlogs that flesh out the world and the character development and the humor. Plus, all the characters had active social media accounts when the show was running and would routinely interact with fans, generating a transmedia experience that added to the verisimilitude. This planted the seeds for the kind of things later web series like the Lizzie Bennet Diaries would take to the next level, exploring character development through world building that served as an optional but delightful garnish. Sadly, despite how successful the show was for Hulu, at some point their contract expired, so the show is not currently available on Hulu. And at some point, the domain expired for the official website, so it's only viewable through the Wayback Machine right now. The show is still available on YouTube. Mostly. Episodes 215 and 218 don't work on YouTube for some reason, which is really frustrating. I mean, out of all the episodes to lose, those ones are probably the ones where you lose the least essential plot points, so the show still makes coherent sense even if you skip over those episodes, so... It's not that big a loss on that front. The show absolutely is still worth binging, but it's annoying because those episodes were funny and I want to watch them again. And they're not on YouTube or Hulu. What gives? The first season is available on DVD from Amazon with a couple of bonus features, mostly some in-character stuff, but there's a couple of out-of-character behind-the-scenes commentaries and things. Season 2 is not out on DVD, so... I can't use that method to watch the missing episodes, and I'm guessing if it was going to come out on DVD, it would have happened by now, so I'm not holding my breath. This show ended a while ago and isn't really an active concern for its creators anymore. But that's actually not a bad thing because it reflects that after the show ended, by and large, the cast and creators went on to find success. Some of them even went on to contribute to the very media that inspired the show in the first place. Gopher and Marshall went on to write for Season 4 of Arrested Development, and Courtney played a love interest for Dwight in the final season of The Office. And while a third season of Dorm Life will probably never, ever, ever, ever happen at this point, we can take comfort in the fact that Mike and Shane are releasing monthly sketches together under their, you know, real names, Chris and Jack. These sketches are brilliant and creative and hilarious and have amazing production value, and so far have featured quite a few Dorm Life reunions plus at least one Airbender reunion, so you should definitely subscribe to that channel. And then you should carve out a few hours and watch the very nearly complete series of Dorm Life on YouTube. It's a wonderfully performed, masterfully written, absolutely hilarious web series that is well worth your time. And until next time, this is Dave, signing off.